Some sheep nearly died in the production of this podcast. So you join me again in my Ford Focus um, because the Irish summer is being very Irish today. I've come up the mountains and, and I've pulled into the side of the road uh, to record this because I didn't want to do a drive because I think the driving is a little bit too distracting when I'm trying to when I'm trying to record a podcast at the same time. However, up these on the, on these back mountainous roads that are uh, not too far a distance from my front door. If I was being generous, I'd say there's maybe five meters of visibility ahead in the road, which is fine. I'm okay with that. But um, there's also some r rather large, what can only be described as rivers going across parts of the road, which make for a, a fun aquaplaning experience, especially when you're rocking a full set of high flies on your Ford Focus. But then I came around a bend, taking some generous speed, but don't worry, I, I was, you know, within the lines and I could see far enough that there wasn't another car coming. But then around the bend were a bunch of sheep that were in the, in the ditch. And when I come around the corner, they decide that that's the time to step out into the road. But thankfully, enough anchors and enough steering lock and enough of a fright to the U. Um, no one no one was injured because believe me if I had have killed a sheep don't judge me I am a vegetarian but if I'd killed a sheep I wouldn't have continued to making this podcast I would have went and cried myself to sleep into into my pillow anyway let's talk about uh, actual cars so it hasn't really been a whole lot of I'm going to talk about the Monaco Grand Prix and um, but I'll save that again till till the end part of the podcast because I know not everyone is into Formula One but also I'd say even if you're a casual fan, someone who has just been catching up on Drive to Survive on Netflix, which I won't get into, but if, if, if you enjoy Drive to Survive, I'm sure you're fully aware of the Monaco Grand Prix and it's this weekend and may, maybe it's maybe it's the one you'll watch because of the glitz and the glamour. But anyway, I'll, I'll get to the Monaco Grand Prix at the end. But in the, in the world of the car, um, not a whole lot's been happening. What's, what's been happening? Um, Ford uh, have shown us the first images and technical details of the new Ford F-150 Lightning. Now, when I hear, when I hear F-150 Lightning, I think of the, what was the new SVT? What was that? Special Vehicles Team? What is it? I can't remember what SVT stands for. It's kind of like the the, the American equivalent of, of ORS and ST and blah, blah, blah. Anyway, when I think of F-150 Lightning, I think of the ones from the, from the early to mid 90s and even into the early millennium single cab, big giant V8 pickup trucks. There was one, I, I used to work in a radio station and we had to pick up, I had to drive for a period of time. Uh, their branded Type 2 Volkswagen van, which hadn't moved in quite some time the first time I went to go pick it up. So I dropped it into uh, the nearest garage um, to have a quick look over. And they had an F-150 um, Lightning in, in <laughs> on Irish plates um, in getting a bit of work done, which some lunatic is cruising around Ireland in a, in a V8 pickup truck with leaf springs in the back. Yeah, but this new F-150 Lightning is, hold your breath, an electric vehicle. So the Ford F-150 is the most mass-produced vehicle in the entire world. Some crazy statistic, if you put them side by side, all of the F-150s that have been made, it would circumnavigate the globe a stupid amount of times. So I don't know, I don't, have the, I don't have the figures in front of me. The figures I do have in front of me though, um, so this, this EV F-150 line is gonna have, it doesn't have, a, they didn't give us, now these are these are targeted uh, figures they're going for because it's still it's still in development, they're saying, but they're gonna go for a 775 pound foot of torque, um, a 300 mile range. It'll be able to tow four and a half tons with a 900 kilo payload in, in the bed. There's gonna be endless amounts of, of USB ports, pin, pin plug, obviously the Americans will be twin, two pin rather than three pin, but two pin plug sockets. Uh, I think there's 10 of them or something. Uh, all sorts, you know, all the, luxury, all the luxuries and, and toys you could think of being an American pickup truck. They're gonna throw the, the bells and whistles at it, especially this is gonna be, they're gonna try and push this, as I say, as, as the new Halo model of the F-150 pickup truck range. It's much of a Halo model that, they love their trucks over in North America, let's just put it that way. If you've been there, you'll know. Even like I lived in Canada, they just love an F-150 up there. The, the one major thing is like, it's gonna, they're gonna have, it's gonna have 150 kilowatt uh, charging capacity. So they're saying, which is, this is a very specific number, uh, 41 minutes it will take to charge from 50, 15% to 80%, which is, that's pretty decent. Yeah, it's gonna be, it's gonna be a, like a sub five second, not to 60, which is ridiculous for a pickup truck. And, but one of the things is like, they're, they're saying, at a full charge, you'd be able to charge a a average family home for three, or charge to power an average family home for three days. And if you really need to, on a, on a kind of a, a trickle 
feed of energy you could do like run a minimum amount of, of appliances and stuff in a house for up to 10 days so you know when the uh when, when the apocalypse comes maybe this electric ford f-150 will be the will be the one to have i must say i have no I have no love really for for pickup trucks and um, I understand why people like them but they're not generally for me a few exceptions to the real the GMC Cyclone for example if you don't know what that is give it a google Jay Leno has one actually he has a good video on his one but this this electric one it sound it, it looks like yeah it's to me it just like it seems to be all things to all men and women and they here whatever question mark whatever you choose yeah and also yeah, it has a thing called the mega frunk so the the front boot opens up and there's all sorts of there's a huge amount the this the, the payload you can put into it is, is it's it's larger than a, fo a ford focus boot uh literage wise but there's also like there's all sorts of ports and connectivity and blah 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 anyway i've talked too much about a pickup truck um, but I must say, I was like, like it's, it's probably the first pickup truck ever that's really like, I, yeah, I could consider owning one. Obviously, I'd never own one in Ireland. It would be too big. But yeah, it's it's cool. If I, if I, for some reason, end up in North America for a period, it's something I would consider, you know, leasing. Because no one buys cars in, in America. They're all leased. leased. We think PCP is a, a new fad. Pfft. People, people haven't been buying cars in America for decades. There was something else I was going to say about the F-150. Oh, yeah, the article I was reading about it, someone chimed in in the comment section going, yeah, well, you know, my my Ford F-350, that has 900 pound-foots of torque, which is kind of missing the point because the F-150 is, is the entry-level pickup truck. And while I worked in Canada, I worked in a, in a garage. There was one point where I had to back a dually F-350. I think I had something like a, I think it was a 7-liter diesel, possibly a V-12. Anyway, this, that thing is not, you're allowed to, you're allowed to drive one of those things on just a regular driver's license over there. I didn't. I only had a temporary license as well because um, I didn't have my Irish license. Well, I did have my Irish license with me, but it, when I went to go get my Canadian license, I couldn't find my Irish one, so they gave me a temporary one so I could do my job. But anyway, long story short, that thing is like it's massive. It's the size of a, a decent sized, like I don't know what the, the you know the, the a UPS truck would be smaller. Put it that way than than an F three fifty. So anyway, that person was missing the point. Um, I'm sure if they make an F three fifty like. EV, they'll throw, throw the kitchen sink at it. Like, look at that Hummer that they buy, the EV Hummer, which they claim has something like 11,000 pound foot of torque, which apparently is some sort of technicality. That's what it will be spinning at from the motor. Anyway, and let's stop talking about electric uh, pickup trucks. What else has happened? Oh, uh, and, and that's actually, I think all of the motor news I'm going to talk about now is actually is all electric. Wow, sign of the times. Uh, so like, sign of the times, Lamborghini announced, I think all of their range will be electrified by 2024. So that means I assume there'll be um, hybrid technology across the board. And then they're going to show us their first full electric vehicle by 2030. So I'd imagine we're going to see it before then. And whether they'll go completely electric by 2030, they didn't quite confirm, but you'd have to assume once the first model comes along, it won't be long before Lamborghini stop making combustion engines, which will be that's Lamborghini without a V12. Yeah, that's and that glorious V10 they currently make. Interesting. Let's let's not jump to conclusions. Yes, I'm I'm still holding the faith. Synthetic fuels are going to give us some sort of last bastion from my cold dead hands. Uh, from the same the same what's the world looking for the same a stable mate to lamborghini volkswagen they they released as well a, a concept of the id3 it's called the they call it the idx basically it has the running gear from the id4 full-on gtx which is supposed to be the hot version of the the id4 that drivetrain into a i ID3 chassis and body and also they've done lots of lightweight things it's wearing lightweight wheels which I think look actually off a, an Audi R8 possibly and a, you know, smaller bucket seats and it's kind of cool I, I actually kind of like it the, the you know it being a concept they put lots of flim flam graphics and stuff on the side of it but yeah I was I'm, I'm yeah like I, I, I don't I, I will never get truly excited about a half assed electric hot hatch until someone comes out which there is actually is a, an article on the intercooler app which I haven't read yet because there's just too much content but until someone someone in the know gets to drive a car that claims to be the be all and end all in driving dynamics with an electric motor in it I'm going to find it hard to get excited about these cars but they, they're, they're trying they're trying they, they realise us enthusiasts want something that will be enjoyable to live with and own and 
toss around a back road. So yeah, that's that's let's not get too gloom and do, gloom and doom, doom and gloom about this stuff. But anyway, continuing on with the EV talk, um, Opal released a Manta concept. So it's kind of a resto mod version of the Manta uh, coupe, which they built in the, the late 70s and 80s and possibly into the early 90s. No, I assume the Cleaver took over before, well before then. But of course, it's, you know, it's, it's, you know, it's 2021. So it's a, it's an electric vehicle. I think that's the running gear from the Mokka E or something. So the performance figures aren't anything particularly to write home about. It's not a particular, I think, I think possibly it's carbon, carbon bodied. It's not a heavy car anyway. But again, it's only a concept. Yeah, it looks okay. It's leaning a bit like body shape. The shell is very, retro in, in its shape and then like you know with modern day LED lights and stuff I'm I find it hard to that's a hard gel to get right I think with people like the, the old aesthetic with, with modern lighting and stuff and um, I do like the rear end of it it's quite nice it, it's a nice it's not a bad looking car I'll give them that much but it's completely let down by the wheels they put on it there's some some form of Ronald wheel I think I've seen it, it looks like a wheel that may have been available on like an, an Astra OPC Astra or VXR or an Insignia VXR or something not so long ago but the, the wheels are too modern too big and too flashy for the the rest of my look but one that if they make it which I doubt they will but if someone managed to get it into private hands they could easily change the wheels on it and some, something something even even a set of Ronald turbos um because they would suit it you know the right size Ronald turbo being a, an old school looking wheel they could maybe work but there's probably even better there's probably even better choices out there speaking of Ronald turbos actually there's someone who lives quite near me who has a, a panda 100 horsepower that I see occasionally which cool car something I would really consider owning if, if I found the right one and I had the had the money in my hands which I well maybe but yeah if, if anyone has a Panda 100 horsepower, do feel free to DM me if you're in, in considering getting rid of it. Anyway, but the one that's that's I see knocking around me, it's a red one, but it's got Ronald turbos on it, which I don't think really suit. They're too retro a wheel for, for a kind of modern, funky, chunky car. But um, I do love a Ronald turbo on the right car. Anyway, getting off topic again. Yeah, the Manta EV, yeah, they're 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 80% there with that. It needs a little bit more of an exciting powertrain and they absolutely need to change the wheels. But um, I saw a Manta the other week. I, I did post it on to... It's in one of my lame car spotting videos I put up recently. A, man a blue with gold wheels, very faded blue, and had a different colour bonnet, which again, maybe it's just faded, but uh, a Manta GSI. You know, the, the thinking man's Cortina. <laughs> not Cortina, Capri, sorry. Um, I know that's not a true statement. It's just, if you didn't want, you're either a Ford guy or you're a, or you're a Vauxhall guy, aren't you? And yeah, like, you know, Vauxhall had their, their cult following. Um, if you wanted to be a little bit different and not follow the Ford crowd. But let's be honest, I haven't driven either of them, but I'd assume the Ford's probably the better car. Uh, there's something, was there something else I can say? No, I think that's all. I think that's really all the current new car bollocks I have to talk about. Well, it's surviving. What have I been up to? Yeah, so I did like some of my lame car spotting videos, which I'm going to continue to do because I actually find them quite enjoyable because it's kind of therapeutic walking around looking looking for nice cars. Um, I, I said a few months ago it's something I was never going to do, but uh, I enjoy it and some people seem to enjoy watching them as well. I did go out the other day and take all the snaps, which I did put up on, on, on Instagram at the end because I was out for, out for a lovely walk, catching up on some podcasts. But yeah, so I didn't do, I didn't bring any equipment with me to do a, do a video, but I saw loads of really nice stuff. Bentley Mulsanne and a left-hand drive E39 530i manual and um, non M sport, uh, which was unlocked as well. <laughs> had these, had kind of like a two, uh, a two piece. I'm gonna assume they were BBS, but from the factory, they were definitely a factory wheel. Um, but a two piece, very similar to the wheels that I would have had, say, on, on my um, on my Polo GTI back in the day, which you could tell because they, they had a crowd, they crowded outer lip because um, water gets in behind them because they are a genuine uh, two piece wheel. And um, but yeah, cool car, left hand drive. It's one of those cars I would, if, some, if that came up for sale. I would uh, I would deal with the left hand drive because it's 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 like it's a 530i without the M Sport bollocks because I'm getting old now and I prefer the for the subtler guys of a of a say a, an SE um, spec uh, E39. But that was cool. Yeah, amongst other what else? Uh, there's, uh, they're all, they're all up, well they're probably actually gone down from the Instagram now. But um, yeah, I so, saw like a purple fully caged up mini. Uh, what else did I see? There was too much, too much. It was, it was one, it was a beautifully glorious day. The one nice day we've had this week because as I said, you can probably hear the rain hitting the, the windows outside my car and the wind possibly. It really truly is the pinnacle of an Irish summer's day. Yeah, let's go. And then what else? Yeah, so I, I also, I found a, I found a mystery disposable camera when I was was clearing out some stuff, um, which I had a small, small percentage of idea what it, what it was from, but I was only guessing really. I knew, I, I very much assumed it was cars because that's the only reason I would have had disposable cameras because I go to car shows and taking pictures. The one, they were terrible. I'm sure you saw them. I put up a little video of me picking them up. Uh, one car I had a feeling was in there was the Jag XJR9 and I'm glad there was pictures in there. Amongst other things, like it was XJ220, XJ an XKSS, 
an XJ13, which is an incredibly rare car. I'm not sure if 100% if, if it was the one real, one rebuilt real one. But either way, uh, yeah, it was it was nice to see what was in there. But the Jaguar XJ, XJR9, um, I, I, I knew I'd seen, well, I'll say, of course, now I remember seeing that the RDS at some point in my life and not having any photographic evidence of it, but now I do. And I, it was like, yeah, like in one of the halls in the RDS, there was no no ribbon around it or anything. You go right up. What a cool, cool car. Many, it won Le Mans, many notable drivers, Martin Brundle, um, um, I think I think Derek Wallace, loads of drivers. Built by Tom Walkinshaw Racing, Tio Lior, the late great Tom Walkinshaw, who also built Phase 1 uh, V6 Clio. Yeah, it was good to get those pictures back. I, um, it was a bit anticlimactic because the, the pictures were terrible. One, it was a, dis a disposable camera. Two, you take these photos and you don't know what you're taking because you can't look back at them. Uh, I'm going to assume the show was in 2003, possibly. So that's what, 18 years ago. There was a large portion of that disposable camera's life where I was probably sitting on a windowsill in the direct sunlight. But I touched up the, the pictures a bit and it's, it's, nice, it's nice to have the curiosity, well, tamed, I, just, I suppose, and to have some photographic evidence of some of those cars I saw. I mean, you know, the XJ13 and the XJR9 and an XJ220, which I, I saw again later because um, Jaguar bought that, brought that same XJ220 to the Cherenier car show um, a few a few years later. Um, they always bring some cool stuff to the the Cherenier car show. They brought the um, XK180 um, to, it was a few years ago, I actually have a shitty YouTube video of that somewhere. I know someone else has a shitty YouTube video of it up there and you can see me and my mates in the background. You can actually hear us in the background. I stumbled upon it. Um, not so long ago, which is which is funny enough. Um, I have a model of that car. It's a really cool looking concept car. They then evolved. I think they had like an, what they did call an F type um, concept, which was a very it was very similar to the XK one hundred and eighty, but it was silver. I remember they actually had it on Blue Peter. Showing my age now, really. And they had the, the did they call it the F type or was it an E type concept? Anyway, but they had it on Blue Peter, and it has a wrap around uh, screen on it that goes right into the the door windows, and like it's all just like it's pillarless. And your your man on the show, I remember, he closed the door as he got out of it, and it's finger was in between the where the where it meets the windscreen and the door window and you could see that there's a little twing in his eye is when he when he caught his finger but he rolled through it i must say um on live tv he didn't shout he didn't scream and he, and he finished his piece to camera anyway side point uh, i'm getting off yeah jaguar it must have been the same people who, who put on the, the put on the turn your car show who, who put all those uh, jag cars into that rds show because it was jag heavy the pictures i had and um, some butter wildcats as well um shame it doesn't look like the turn your car show is going to go ahead this year i, I wouldn't say because it's usually first weekend in july isn't it july bank holiday weekend june bank holiday weekend it's many anyway, it's it's due to be on in a few weeks one but if the weather was like this it'd be shit anyway but um yeah i don't think we'll quite be allowed to do it in under current covid restrictions and um, we're because i'll be two summers down without the old tearing your car show and it ain't summer without tearing your um but we'll see maybe maybe they'll surprise us and tell us they're, they're still going to put it on yeah that's enough i think that's enough rambling about all that crap um so i'm just going to finish off this this pod with just a little bit of chat about the monaco grand prix which is happening this weekend and um, the, the unique way that uh, monaco works um free practice one and two was on yesterday thursday rather than friday and so the first practice session i think prez pulled out the fastest time i think it was prez I think it was prez max and then possibly leclerc or science or was it one of the mercs anyway then free practice two the the two ferraris were one and two and followed by max i think again um interesting if if you're going to what like to qualifying is on tomorrow um there'll be free practice three first at 11 and then i think Qualifying is at two, so it's an it, it, two to three. It's an hour long qualifying. Qualifying is way more important in Monaco because it's such a difficult track to overtake on, and obviously it being a street track where you make any kind of mistake, you're going to a wall or a barrier. And to get the best lap time, you need to be pinpoint accurate with 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 everything. So what watching everyone go for their flying laps um, around Monaco, like you know, low fuel, flat out, giving it everything, it can be can be more exciting than the race. Um, so if, if you have an hour and you have any interest, I'd, I'd suggest watching the, the qualifying. And then obviously, you know, if you want to watch the race as well, do watch the race. And um, the race will be on at two o'clock on Sunday. So it'd be good to see. Like Lewis Hamilton doesn't have the greatest record around there. He has won it three times. He was the last. He they didn't have the race last year again because of COVID. But he he was the last winner. He won it in 2019. Danny Rick goes well around there. He should have won it twice, but he has won it at least once. God love him. He got robbed in 20... Was it 2017? When they fucked up his pit stop. The, the, the race was his. Just save it, mate. Just save it. 
Um, yeah, it was sad. But he got he got he got redemption the following year. So yeah, he must have won it then in twenty yeah, twenty eighteen that he won it. Don't think Danny, well, they, I don't think Danny Rick will be winning it this year. But um, yeah, Lando Norris is still showing. He he, he had some good runs in, in free practice. Um, and obviously McLaren are going to be rocking around in their Gulf livery um, for Monaco, which looks fantastic. But yeah, the Monaco Grand Prix, it's it's and the, the great thing about Monaco as well, the discussion of track limits won't even be on the radar because there are no track limits. If you go over the track limits, you hit a barrier. It's great. Some people say that. Monaco is, it's it, it's a it's irrelevant at this point. Um, the current Formula One cars really don't see that they are way too long and wide to overtake. Like it's, it's difficult to overtake any in, in any era of Formula One around that place because it's so tight and narrow. But these cars are so wide and so sensitive to following another car. It, it, it'll be really difficult um, to overtake. But it's still it's just still so spectacular to see Formula One cars going flat out around that crazy muni- municipality um, in southern France. Um, Charlie Leclerc, who lives born and raised in Monaco. Um, um, he's never finished a race in any category at Monaco, um, which will be something he'll hope to put right. Um, and if the pace that the Ferraris have shown in practice is real, you know, the Ferraris could maybe upset things a little bit this weekend. But anyway, let's hope it's, a, it's an interesting race. And hopefully get a good result. Uh, the Red Bulls are generally good around uh, Monaco as well. So Max could do with a win here, right? And if, if a few people could take some points away from Lewis as well, that would really sweeten up um, how things are going. Because we're still so early into the season, but that last race in Spain really felt ominous. One, their strategy was unbelievable, but on, on the medium tyre, once Lewis was out in front, yeah, they just they, they seemed to have the quicker race car overall. But we shall see. It's it's early days and uh, there's still lots of controversy. Like, a lot of controversy going on about bendy wings and there's going to be changes to the regulations of how the wings are tested and stuff after Azerbaijan which is which is the race after this um, so there could be oh it's, it's already getting all a bit feisty and political Toto Wolf and Christian Horner Toto Wolf being the, the team boss of Mercedes and Christian Horner being the team boss of Red Bull they're already having a little bit of tits, tit, tit for tat in the media and stuff about who knows what and who's doing this that and the other um, and you know you can see a little bit of frustrated Max which is not necessarily the best Max but it, uh, it is an entertaining Max and you can see Lewis you know trying to play the mind games with him a little bit and you know if, if Lewis gets to the point where he feels he needs to be playing mind games well then even you know that means Lewis even feels a little bit nervous um, so it is still shaping up to be a good season just so hopefully Lewis doesn't win this one and 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 get like a fastest lap as well and because and he has got a has got a bit of a sneaky lead he brought out from Barcelona I think he's it's not massive I think it's only like maybe a, maybe nine points or something maybe a little bit more than that I'd have to double check but um, yeah good result for Max and maybe a few points taken away from Lewis just to just to even out the playing field a bit a bit more again because um, I say this we're only we've only have, we're only four races down and it's a it's a big calendar it's well it's supposed to be 20 i think this is supposed to be 23 races this year or 21 anyway we've already lost canada won't be happening and it was supposed to be replaced by turkey but turkey can't can't put it on now either so we're having a double austria and now it's looking very unlikely that uh, singapore will go ahead um apparently like yeah the singapore government are being are really cracking down because they're not that far away from 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 india um, in the grand scheme of things and things aren't going great over there and okay my heart my heart goes out to to all the people over in India because I really don't like they're having it's getting it's getting to a point where people are panicking due, due to the, the lack of oxygen there are more, there are much more important things going on in the world uh, at the moment than than Formula One so I don't mind losing a few races try and catch the Monaco qualifying and and, and tune in for the race as well if, if you have the time because it'll it'll be a fun watch Regardless, the jewel in the crown, as they say, of the Formula One, the Formula One uh, calendar. Uh, um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna sign off there now, um, and 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 I'll put this together and put it out. Um, I would love to go out and do something in in the in the outdoors today, go, do a bit of exploring or something. But God, the weather's cat. Um, but anyway, I hope I hope I haven't bored you too much. Stay safe, stay well. I'll talk to you again soon. Bye.